Hello and welcome to the Hoof GP YouTube channel. My name is Graham Parker. That is Craigie Boy in the background. And this channel is all about cows and their hoof care. So if you like that kind of thing, then hit the subscribe button right now, watch the rest of this video and give it a big thumbs up if you like it. Today we are at one of my regular farms where we are trimming about 40 to 45 Holsteins, all pretty much routine stuff, but I'm gonna show you some of the cows that we're dealing with today and I'm gonna give you a quick tour around the Appleton Steel Ultra Shoot. Lots of people contact me and ask me for tips and tricks of the trade. Now here is the most important one. Always sharpen your knives. Your knives should be like razors. Having knives like razors completely transforms your trimming abilities. It really gives you finesse, it gives you accuracy, and it gives the cow the best possible chance at recovery because you are up in your trimming game. That's Craig. Say hi Craig. Hi. Craig is putting out sawdust basically so that the cows don't slip when they come out of the crush and it keeps it nice and dry for us and tries to keep some of the <coughs> down. So while Craig goes and fills up the race full of cows ready for us to get started, I'm going to give you guys a quick tour of the Appleton Steel. <coughs> so first up I'll show you the inside of the crush. Good, Chris. So first up, I'm going to show you the inside of the crush or shoot so that you guys see what the animals are seeing and what exactly is going on inside. So this is called a belly band and the whole thing actually lifts up on these two arms here. So it swings all the way up and supports the cow from underneath. So when we press the button here on the remote control or a lever, the belly band will lift up and those little plates will come in. Like so. Those plates are basically to stop the animal being able to kick us and therefore hurt herself and hurt us. And when we press the down button, guess what? The opposite happens. The head gate on this crush is one of the main, main advantages over the WAP on my previous crush. And that's partly why I went for this crush. I love the head gate. It's called a Texas style head yoke and it's extremely fast. It's really, really open so the cow can see the way out really easily and that encourages our forward, which is good for me and the cow. So basically it works on this scissor action here. This cylinder pushes down, which pushes this scissor action down and shuts the gate inward. We can stop it wherever we like. So if we press in, we can move it a little bit or a big bit, whatever we like. The Wapa had a V-shaped head yoke, which basically meant it only opened at the top. So the bottom was always closed and it made it really narrow for the cows, or at least not as inviting to walk through. This here is the come along or back bar. The come along's job is to contain the cow completely within the crush, but also to support her hind feet. So they lift up into these little places here. I've got my controls for the come along here. Got knife holders, a poo guard. This pulley system doubles up the strength capabilities of these hydraulic cylinders up here. And there's one for each foot. So the foot's coming straight back rather than at an angle. This is the hydraulic so sorting gate. And we can open it like this to let the cow through. Close it behind her like that. As it closes behind, we bring the come along down behind her, which really contains the cow and the head gate is being shut at the same time. Another fantastic thing about this crush is it's got a thing called a shuttle. So basically, I said shuttle, a shuttle. So basically the shuttle moves the whole of the come along back and forward. So it can adapt sizes to the different size of cows or bulls that we're trimming. So a little Jersey or a huge Charlie bull, they all fit nicely. So that is it fully extended and we can move it like so. So there's probably about a meter of play there. It's definitely one of my favorite features of this crush. So a lot of the crush is actually synchronized. So as I push one button, lots of different things happen. So what happens is basically, so the cow will come in, the Once the cow is in position, the chute raises all the way up to the top. This isn't it actually full height. 
because I'm six foot one and Craig is five foot six, something like that. We have it set slightly lower because it's more comfortable for him and it's a bit of a compromise for me, but it's a fine one. And actually adjust the height here by moving this little knob up and down. The Crush actually does have the capabilities to lift all four feet in the air at the same time if you wanted to, but we generally lift the two front feet at the same time and one back foot. The front feet leg lifts are awesome as well, by the way. Go, go gadget legs. So you hit this lever and the whole thing swings down. This whole arm can move whatever way you want it to move. You go all the way to the other side. So as you can see, it is very, very maneuverable. We swing it in here. Once we get the cow in between these, this claw here and this claw here, which looks like it's a mission, but it's not, it's easy. We just push these two buttons and look, it grabs the claw. And then we push that one and like that. The trimming position is fantastic. All of these levers here control every single function of the crush. So you've got shoot or crush lift, the belly band goes up and down, the shuttle, which is the move your backy forward thing, and the come along, which is also known as the back bar, these hydraulic side gates, which are these here, and the rear sort gate, which is that one there. So all of those functions are actually available on the other side and on the remote control. And then you have extra functions here. So when this crush is on the ground, you can control the back gates, the come along and the sort gate. So it's really, really versatile. This crush is actually fitted with a roof as well or a sunshade. So depending on where you are in the world, you might use it for rain or you might use it for sun. Either way, that roof extends about a meter and a half on either side of the crush. These yellow things are fans for cooling us down on hot days. All around the crush there are knife holders. So we've got two knife holders at each position on the crush. So basically working with plenty of knives, you've always got a sharp knife just to hand and they're right in the right place. My crush is actually fitted with stainless steel options. So I've got stainless steel fenders or mud guards, stainless steel teardrops, anti-kick plates, stainless steel side guards, the floor stainless steel, pretty much every option on this crush because I didn't think I could send it back the 3,000 miles that it came initially to get an upgrade if I wanted it. Storage is a big issue for hoof trimmers, so we have plenty of it. We've got this massive storage cupboard here, which has got three shelves and a radio up the top. It's got power points inside it, uh, 110 and 240, so it works in the UK and America. Then we've got a hot box down here, which contains all of our glue, glue guns, Bovie Bond, how awesome is Bovie Bond glue? This box is actually heated and it's got 110 outlets in there so we can plug extra heaters in if we wanted. Then we've got a bandage chute, so that's full of bandages. As you pull one, the next one falls down. There are holders everywhere on this crush. I did ask specifically for them, so if you ever order one, ask for them too. So we've got cup holders here, bottle holders, we've got a little shelf, stainless steel. In here we've got a gas canister holder, iodine holders, more controls for the shuttle and the come along. And these gates, I get asked about these gates a lot. These gates are a great idea. They look kind of funky, which is the main reason I wanted them. But also, if you look from this angle, you have an almost unobscured view of the cow walking into the crush. Whereas, because cows can't see backwards, they can't see out at you. On the rear of the crush, we've got stainless steel access gates for the cows. So we basically link these on to wherever it is we're working on the farm. They're really, really strong and they're great because they clean up nicely because they're stainless steel. So we're always hooking these on to the farmer's gates or the crush or whatever. As soon as you get these crushes, basically you just plug them into your pickup and away you go. They come fitted with lights or running gear, top and bottom for the UK because we need them down here as well as up there. And we've got a massive cable reel here. We've never actually needed to plug an extension in yet. I think it's like 60 meters long. It's awesome. And more storage around here. Again, we like storage. So we've got printer, kettle, uh, water heater, grinders, batteries always on charge down the bottom and plenty of space in there. One of the most common questions I get, especially in the UK is, how does it tow? It's so heavy and it's only got a single axle. It does only have a single axle. Well, look at the size of the wheels on that axle. So they roll really, really well. The axle itself is strong as hell. So I don't anticipate any problems with that at all. And it's got electric brakes. So we're pretty much good to go.
up. The days can be really long when you're trimming lots and lots of cows, but they are really rewarding. They're financially rewarding as well as being just rewarding on the soul kind of thing. And people are always asking, how much is this? How much is that? How much do you make? Well, basically we charge per cow. So the farm I'm at today gets charged £10 per cow, which is about $13. The farm I was at yesterday get charged £9 a cow, which is about $11.80. And that's because these farms are on different routines. So if I go every two weeks, they get charged less. Every four weeks, they get charged a slight discount. And if I go once in a blue moon or once just occasionally, then they get charged about £11 per cow, which works out about $14.50 or something, which isn't that much. It does mount up and some of my invoices can be quite large, but there is a huge amount of expense in actually trimming cow's feet. We've got crushes to pay for, or shoots to pay for, we've got the truck to pay for, fuel, blocks, constantly changing the blades in our discs, knives, all of these sorts of things. So it works out as a reasonably good living, but nothing that is going to make you a millionaire, that is for sure. The eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed there haven't been as many uploads lately. That's partly because of coronavirus, and partly because I did loads of filming the other day for about two or three videos and then lost the cameras. Oopsie! The farm we've been trimming on today lies right on the southwest coast of Scotland, just outside the town of Stranraer, and the cows on this farm are put out to grass as often as they possibly can be. Weather permitting, grass permitting, and health permitting. Here we're flying over them just as they're about to come in for the afternoon milking. As you can see, the grass in this part of Scotland really, really does grow well. The fields are green, the grass is lush, and the cows are happy to be out there. Guys, I'm going to leave you with this aerial footage of Stranraer and the surrounding areas. Thank you very, very much for watching again, and as always, I'll catch you next time. Bye bye! There ain't no other way but to